All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, June 7th Board of Selectmen meeting. It being 6.30, we're going to enter into executive session for approximately a half an hour. We do have quite a bit to cover this evening, so I wouldn't be surprised if we run a few minutes late, just be aware. But we should be back on or about 7 p.m. for our regularly scheduled meeting. So with that, can I get a motion to enter into executive session followed by a roll call, please? <clears throat> Motion to conduct strategy sessions in preparation of negotiations with non-union personnel or contract negotiations concerning town manager and finance director contracts and to vote on prior executive session meeting minutes. Second. All right, so we'll take roll call in order, please. Mark, yes. Dennis, yes. Leah, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. All right, great. So we'll see everyone in approximately a half an hour. All right, we're back. All right, thanks for everyone. We're only... Eight minutes. We did. We got a lot done in 38 minutes. So I appreciate your patience. So um, with that, why don't we start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll move into citizens' input. Right. All right. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, great. So welcome back to the June 7th, 2022 meeting. We're out of executive session. Is anyone here for citizens' input or anyone submit anything in advance, Christina? No? All right, great. So we're going to start off with um, um, approving the amended and updated contracts for the town manager and finance director. We were just in executive session and discussed both of those. Um, we had some good discussion, and I think we are ready to move forward with motions on both of those. So we will take the motions that are in board docs, please, Dennis, when you're ready. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> A motion to approve the amended town manager contract and January 29th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion to approve the amended addendum A of the town manager's contract to begin January 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. So the, the contracts that were in place from 2020, um, we just shifted the dates a little bit mm -hmm. to reflect the new dates that we talked about at our last meeting. All right, and then next is our finance director, George Samia. His contract is actually up July, uh, June 30th, sorry, and he is going to stay with us for one more year. So we are going to, we agreed to extend his contract. Um, all other terms pretty much remaining the same. The new dates. <clears throat> Motion to approve a one year contract extension for finance director George Samia uh, for July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. So moving on to item four, we have Aaron, how do you say it, Hire, Hire here, to talk about our technology IT department for our department updates. Can I tell him I can help myself? <laughs> I saw you guys are going to be collecting laptops soon, too, so that should keep you busy for a little bit. It, it will. It definitely <laughs> will. There you go. All right, so we have about 15 minutes to run through your department update. All right, I'm just um, just going to join the meeting through Zoom so okay. I can share a couple of slides. Does he need help with getting that connected no, so, that. on Zoom? No, he's good. Okay. All right. Well, good evening. It's it's um, it's exciting to be here in person. Yes. Um, it's it's been a little while since I've been able to to come to the board and, and give an update on 
Technology and the Joint Technology Services Department. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about FY um, 2021 and 2022 in terms of the accomplishments and some of the things that that have uh, been going on with uh, technology services here in Foxborough and in the Foxborough Public Schools. <coughs> so just some um, brief background. Uh, the, the town of Foxborough and the Foxborough Public Schools consolidated um, technology services into a joint um, technology offering um, in 2013, 2014. In 2014, we opened um, renovated data center um, in both the Foxboro High School and the Foxboro Joint Public Safety Building to provide um, all town departments, uh, DPW Public Safety, in the Foxboro Public Schools um, with technology um, solutions. Um, the sharing of, of, of personnel, um, infrastructure, and software has really allowed the town and the schools to leverage efficiencies and to streamline technology costs, services, and operations. So it's, it's been a quite a benefit to both the schools and the town. Um, in terms of our mission, we're not necessarily always a, a, a public or constituent facing department. We provide a service um, to, to employees, but we do um, support the mission of, of all departments in terms of providing constituent services, and, and we do um, consult with all departments on using technology for innovation, you know, in terms of constituent services and serving the community. So our mission is um, the town of Foxboro and the Foxboro Schools Shared Technology Services Department is to identify, implement, and support fiscally sustainable, safe, dependable, and innovative uses of technology to develop next generation of municipal government departments, educational operations, in kindergarten through 12th grade teaching and learning to provide technology planning um, and technical to support to all town departments and school departments. <clears throat> Our vision is that the town of Foxborough and the public schools innovative use of technology and digital services will engage our citizens in our um, in community in our local government in our students in our school community and learning. Um, and the technology will enhance our next generation government offices, constituent services, educational operations, teaching and learning, and that our technology infrastructure will be reliable and fiscally sustainable and well supported. <coughs> so in terms of the services we provide, again, a lot of the service we provide on a day-to-day -day basis is to our internal departments or our colleagues. Um, but when we talk about what next generation government offices are and how we've embraced that here in Foxboro, we're talking about online bill payments, online permitting, um, online licensing, um, our internet presence and citizens engagement strategies. We're talking about um, government information systems, public safety operations and reporting, water systems management. So um, the water department, um, they utilize a, a very sophisticated you know, SCADA system, computerized technology to manage our well sites and water treatment. We're also talking about online and collaboration and productivity that enhances our workforce and allows our workforce to work more efficiently and to provide a higher level of service to our constituents. <coughs> um, some other housekeeping type items, right? These are some of the, the maybe not so public facing things, but do impact the community, you know, financial systems and other municipal specialty software. Um, and then professional development, providing training to our workforce to develop our workforce to keep, um, to keep their skills current in terms of technology. So again, that we can harness technology for innovation, but also productivity. So on the educational side, a lot of these things are similar, right? We talk about um, geographic information systems. We use these in many of the departments with police, fire, water, um, sewer, highway. But we also use them on the school side, for instance, to plan bus routes. So we, instead of having um, separate technology departments and separate technology for GIS, we're, we're able to leverage those GIS systems on both sides, the town and the schools, and throughout the departments um, to, to leverage those efficiencies. So, but also on the school side, again, we support um, instruction, 
Um, so teaching and learning, so that's classroom technology. <coughs> excuse me. That's, <coughs> excuse me, that's also classroom technology. Um, also um, food services, for instance, food service point of sale system. So when students go through the, the, the lunch line, um, there's data that we need to collect for the state, of, uh, for the state but there's also um, data that, that um, turns into financial reimbursements and federal funding for the schools as well. Um, emergency notification, again, professional development. So there's a lot of commonalities between the schools, between the town, and amongst the individual town departments as well. <coughs> so when we talk about um, the services that we provide and how we provide them, um, municipal and educational plans um, drive innovation and innovative technology. So we talk about the nuts and bolts, um, wireless networking, um, cloud computing, internet technology. These are, these are the really technical things um, that are behind the scenes that allow us to provide a lot of the services that we do to both our staff and to the, into the community. Um, and these plans also drive things like budget de uh, development, scopes of services, request prioritization, workflow, and hours of support. So we support um, multiple 24 by seven operations, and we do that with a department that isn't 24 by seven. So we have to be good at, at managing priorities and communicating. So we have police, fire, sewer, water, and highway, right? So our, our, those departments, sometimes we don't think of as 24 by seven, but um, when we have snowstorms or weather emergencies, um, we're supporting those departments often in, in off hours. So um, those, what we're doing in terms of technology planning, it's tied back to the town's master plan. It's tied back to the school's strategic planning. <clears throat> in, in terms of the work that we do, talked about a lot of this, I'm not gonna read it word for word, um, but we provide the network infrastructure town-wide. So again, the town operates its own private fiber network that connects all of its municipal facilities, whether that's water, uh, the water treatment plant at Pumping Station Road, or our school buildings, town offices, uh, council on aging, recreation. It, it provides uh, um, core network services, internet connectivity, you know, um, file, file sharing, remote access, network security. We provide those to all departments. Um, Again, I mentioned that in 2014, we, we established the town's um, diverse data center. These two, our two data center sites, again, being the high school and the public safety. These resources are leveraged and they scale for all town departments. So when an application, when a department requires an application or application hosting, we're not having to buy servers or buy equipment or buy storage for the specific applications. Most times we're able to, to leverage or scale the infrastructure we have to provide the, those services. Um, one of the things that you might not know is that our data center provided um, application hosting to the SIMREC um, 911 center in terms of the, the transition and the transition phases um, from phase one being Foxborough and Mansfield out of the H Chestnut Street. Um, then um, with Mansfield, Easton, um, sorry, with Easton and Norton, then later, later joining, um, we provided a lot of the technology planning and, and hosting um, during the interim transition until their center at, at High Rock was up and then we helped them with that, that transition there too. Um, <coughs> in terms of the, the help desk, um, help desk is, is quarter operations. This is kind of the, 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 the daily operations piece, keeping things running. Um, so we provide um, support to over 700 employees, that's town and school wide. Um, and anywhere from, since I've been here, 26 to 2,800 students, um, you know, providing them with basic um, support, training, um, and, and help with their, their equipment and getting their work done. And, and a lot of times providing consults in terms of productivity or, or just how to use your equipment most efficiently. <coughs> On the school side, there's quite a bit of um, data and applications management, or so educational applications that we, we support on the school side for student learning, but there's also a lot of state 
reporting requirements, um, which again, um, that data that we transmit to the state um, is then used to, to calculate funding and other support and grant opportunities that there are for the, the schools. Um, we're kind of the all things that plug into the wall at times. Um, so in, in addition to computers and servers and networks, um, we also support telephones, voicemail, security um, camera systems, car to access. Um, you know, we, we assist with maintenance with burglar alarms. Um, you, you name it, we say if it plugs into the wall, sometimes we're the ones that get the call. So, um, you know, sometimes um, could be audio vi visual equipment, which is was actually something that's, that's quite a, a bit of on both the town and the school side, um, too. And then um, building construction and renovation support for all town construction projects. Um, so we did the technology design here for this building here, including the la lateral cable plant. Um, we assisted with that um, as well. So, but but everything from. Um, you know, the, the, the MDF or the main data frame where all the wiring comes back, the switching, that we, we assisted with all that. And then also the borough school as well. <clears throat> so the past couple of years have, have been a little bit different in the health desk. Uh, we, we had to transition from being a department that um, was providing a lot of desk, desk side support Right, going out to people's locations and providing them with the support they need to providing a lot of remote support. And that is, that is very different, and, and the tools and the strategies that you use are quite different. So um, I, I think we did a, a good job throughout COVID, um, retooling as we needed to, 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 to meet people um, where they're at and provide them with what they need at the time when they need it. Um, so this past year we did about 6,700 requests. This is really tough for us to track um, because a request can be something as simple as a password reset that may take maybe take a minute um, um, but it can also be something much more substantial much more involved um, is something for instance i can give an example so we were recently involved in is um, re, re um, moving offices or office moves um, moving lateral cable so moving network drops and telephones and things from one space in the building to another to accommodate um, an office move so that could that could go, you know, from time we do a site survey, go out and look at what needs to be done, and then move cables and things that can go on for for 15, 20, 30 man hours. So the number of requests not all, isn't always is significant too, is um, or doesn't always accurately represent how much manpower is needed to complete these things. Um, we have seen a, a large increase. I think it was. In 2020, a 50% increase, and then this past year, like a 37% increase in the number of requests that, that um, we're logging. And a lot of that, I think, is directly related you know, to COVID and the types of remote support and things that people needed to keep um, services up and running during those times. Um, <clears throat> so with COVID, um, throughout the pandemic, Really, our department continued to adapt to meet new challenges. We talked about that shift from in-person support to remote support, um, but, but really, too, for remote learning, um, but also um, providing more and enhanced online constituent services and, and our staff with those tools needed to, to do that um, successfully and keep things going. Um, <clears throat> really, I'd, re I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the staff of our department um, during these transitions, our staff worked incredibly hard and diligently to implement technology to ensure the continuity of, of our municipal services and school operations. Um, in terms of, of, of COVID, this was an incredibly impactful time for, for everybody, um, but it was incredibly difficult, I'd say, for our, our technology staff. You know, um, many coming in very, very early in the morning, staying very late at night, and, and working five, um, you know, 10 hour days and then coming back on, you know, Saturday and Sunday and, and working, you know, putting in another eight or, or seven or eight hours on a Saturday or Sunday to make sure that on, on Monday morning that people would be successful. So I wanna extend my sincerest gratitude to our, to our staff. Um, but also there's a lot to be said about the relationships that we have with our, our, our um, boards and committees. 
um, and our leadership here, both on the town side, uh, the town manager's office, our department heads, and um, on the school side as well, because without those those working relationships where where people would get together and really just get the job done, you know, um, for for our citizens and our students, um, without those relationships, I, I don't think we could could have done that. So, again, um, this thank the, the citizens of Boxborough. It's really such a supportive community. We're really lucky. Um, again, on the on the town side. I mean, there was a, a rapid mobilization, um, you know, to, in terms of getting our, our workforce um, the capabilities to work mobily. Some, some needed it, some did not. Um, but there was also that contingency planning piece. It's almost like insurance. Like, it, we weren't quite sure sometimes of what we were going to need, um, but planning ahead so that we weren't two, three, four days behind in terms of um, being able to provide services. So trying to stay always a step ahead so that that we were able to keep services going and we weren't having to, to close or, or not have people available for, for a couple of days. Um, so part of that is we, we um, quickly implemented some enhanced communication systems to allow our, our staff to take phone calls through a mobile app. Um, so essentially putting their extension on a mobile app also allow for um, inter-office calling from the mobile app um, you know, so that, that people could continue to work and we could keep that continuity for our staff that were on site or staff working remotely and for our constituents. Um, again, remote access is, is something that um, has been around for quite a long time, but when we look at the, our municipal organization at that time in 2020, our workers were on site here. Um, there are very few people with remote access, so um, in, a, in a quick time, we were able to, to scale up remote access, um, but also with COVID became increased cyber threat, right? So people using um, COVID, using misinformation as a, as a, as a phishing lure, um, there was a, quite a big increased threat, so needing to do that um, in a safe and secure way. Um, we're also able to set up um, emergency operations centers at that time, too, to take calls from citizens and get them in touch with, with services that they need, and we're able to get those things going really quickly. Um, one of our big projects was a, a water construction project on Pumpering Station Road. I don't know, I might need some help from, from Lance, but um, there's, I believe, seven sites over there now. Yeah, so there's there are seven sites. There's a number of, of pumping well buildings. Um, there's a operations building and there's a treatment plant there. Um, so the technology services department, we, we were able to do um, a lot of the design for the um, fiber connectivity that was needed between those buildings um, to support the water, water skater system. We actually were able to um, remove the fiber construction portion from the contract and um, we were able to build it and actually even more robust fiber network amongst those sites and, and we did so I believe it was for about thirty thousand dollars less so creating a thirty thousand dollars saving so in that case providing even more value is like a, a more for less situation so um, we we're able to work with with uh, our contractors and um, the office of um, the, the state office um, of, of services um, to leverage state contracts and then our own team to do quite a bit of um, the work in terms of the termination and configuration equipment needed um, to get that site up and running. So that was, that was quite an accomplishment. Um, the borough school construction, if you haven't seen the borough, I recommend you do. Um, the building is, is full of amazing technology um, for our students, really, and, and it's, it's um, set up in a way um, to keep students safe. There's lots of safety features, um, whether that's security or card access. Um, and then there's also lots of technology for learning. Um, with the transition of um, Sem to SEMREC into their uh, beautiful dispatch center on the, on the High Rock, um, we did some renovation in the, in the public safety building to convert the former communications and dispatch center into um, a station office and report writing area, 
um, kind of operation operational area for the station <coughs> with screens for viewing like you know, security cameras um, and also providing access to, to criminal justice information systems um, there and that that room the construction in there was uh, really a collaboration between maintenance from um, folks over at public safety too quite a bit <coughs> of the officers over there actually some of the folks over on the fire side um, you know volunteering some of their time too to help with that um, renovation but um, that office we were able to really accomplish quite a bit there with, with uh, very little um, funding, provide a lot of value there. Um, again, in terms of uh, SEMREC, we, we assisted with a lot of the um, technology planning and technology installation and logistics um, throughout the phases of SEMREC until, until turning that over to them once they're in their, their new building. Um, just quickly, you know, COVID support at the schools, we, we, we talked about this. Many of you have children at home, so you're quite familiar with, with uh, remote learning. Um, it, it's quite the undertaking, right? And, and um, I, I like to use the, the earliest term, which was emergency learning, because I really, I really feel like it was emergency learning throughout the whole way. But, um, but I, I think we were able to, to leverage technology and really the the things that our teachers and our staff were able to do throughout COVID and, let, and, and really the transitions they, were ma they made in terms of their work was quite, a, quite amazing. Um, you know, and again, again, the collaboration between technology and innovation, but then also as people, people's will, right, to, to, um, to do the best they can for um, our town and for our, our children here. So uh, throughout COVID, one of the, the major feats was, again, the transition to, to remote learning, but was also the deployment of upwards of 300 lap, 3,000 laptops um, to students, teachers, and staff. Um, so again, transitioning really a whole technology program from, a, from an on-site, you know, fixed location technology program where you have computer labs, computer classrooms, um, you know, computer learning stations to mobile learning, and that's both inside and outside of the building. So needing to increase capacity on things like wireless and, and internal networking and internet access, internet bandwidth to really make that work. <coughs> Some of our, our recent uh, awards and recognitions uh, over the past year or so is um, this past year we were recognized um, as a cyber, we were given the cyber aware community designation um, by the State Office of Technology Services and Security. Um, this is in recognition for our efforts around um, education and learning um, that our staff undertook um, through an initiative around teaching our staff to be more cyber aware and um, cyber secure. So when we look at technology threats, we talk about hacking, we talk about viruses, we talk about malware, we talk about all these really technical things um, where a large, really a large um, component of, of risk when we look at our attack surface is social engineering. And it, that, what that means is, is tricking people into doing things that they should not do. Um, and this, this really is probably one of the biggest and most difficult pieces in terms of um, hardening our, our cybersecurity. So there's some really easy examples of these. That, um, you know, so it, it's, it's essentially like tricking somebody to unlock the door to their car for, for them to go in and steal something from their car, right? Um, so some examples of things that towns have faced or other organizations faced, it's, it's really everybody, um, is during um, inclement weather, right? Um, pe people that, that run these, um, really they're, they're almost like well-organized businesses, um, you know, um, cyber attackers, right? Um, during an a inclement weather event, they might go to the town website or a school website or a business's website and look at their staff directory. And when they look at the staff directory, they can figure out that 
everyone's email address follows this pattern of an initial and a last name. And they may send out an email to one of the staff members from somebody of, um, um, you know, maybe a management position. So a department head, and they, they um, impersonate that person. They create a fake account with that name. And they email that person and they say, can you give me, um, can you send me your cell phone number so I can give you a quick call? And that person might reply quickly from their iPhone with their cell phone number. And then they might get a text. And that text might say, um, somebody in town had a fire last night and people are collecting, um, people are donating things that the family might need. Um, and some people have recommended buying an Amazon gift card because that will be the quickest way we can get them help. Can you buy an electronic Amazon gift card and text me a copy of it, right? So our, our employees, our community is so supportive. Many people might jump online on Amazon and buy a $25 gift card and then send that text message back. That person thinks they're texting back the school principal or texting that to a department head that's gonna, you know, uh, uh, someone over in human services that's gonna help get support to that family. So <clears throat> there was no compromise in terms of, nobody's password was compromised, there was no malware, there was no, there, there was no um, security threat. It just was an instance where somebody was tricked into doing something that they shouldn't have done. Um, so this type of, of cybersecurity training, it teaches people about that. It teaches people about, we talk about mobile workforces, it teaches people about if you're sitting in an airport or a coffee shop and you're doing work, being aware of what's on your screen to make sure that there's not private information that somebody nearby or not leaving your laptop on a desk in the coffee, uh, on the table in the coffee shop when you go to the bathroom because somebody might pick it up and take it and it has it might have data on it right so um, this is a big component so we were recognized um, is is one of uh, of of several but but a, a fairly small amount of communities um, in Massachusetts as um, for the cyber aware designation because these training efforts so in 2021 we received the municipal cyber awareness grant program, we, we also received this in 2022. Um, it provides us with, with training, and then it also provides us with um, some assessment capabilities, the ability to, to send um, simulated phishing events or emails to staff and to test them, to test their, their knowledge and their ability to, to respond to this. This has by far been, one, I was a little skeptical, to be honest. This has by far been one of the most successful programs we've implemented um, we track a lot of, uh, of, of data, we look at a lot of different things, um, and we, we come to know um, people that, that maybe um, get lured into these social engineering type things more than others. And then through this program, we've seen those people be the ones that come forward and they're the, the quick identifiers of these things and alerting other people. So they've taken these, these this training modules and now they're sending quick emails out to people. If anybody else gets this email, delete it. It's 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 a phishing scam, you know. So um, we've it's, actually done that on several occasions. Yeah, we do that at my work too. Yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> so our, our staff has really 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 benefited from that. Um, just recently, this past week, um, Manager uh, Keegan and I we we um, accepted a community compact municipal fiber grant. Um, from the from the state, so this is a, a grant that we work collaboratively with uh, with the DPW. Um, it's to provide uh, to extend our fiber network um, out to some of our um, a couple of our remote water sites, water well sites um, that don't um, that don't have those fiber connections, and they're currently connected with an older paging type technology, which gives them more limited insight and control on those sites. So. Um, this, this award was for 139000 to get uh, those two sites brought onto the fiber ring, and it will bring our ring actually further down South Street, um, quite a bit um, further than the, the Taylor School, which will get us to, to these sites, but then will also be an asset for us to leverage in the future. Um, and then, too, I just wanted to mention the, the AAA bond rating. Um, so every time the town goes through a review with Standard & Poor's, um, one of the big um, questions is around our 
um, posturing and our capabilities in terms of cybersecurity, but also our ability to respond and to recover from those. Um, and, and every year we've, uh, every time we've gone through this process, we've um, come out pretty successful. Um, and that's, that's shown by the AAA bond rating there. So we are about double the time that we had planned. Okay. So we just gotta, we just gotta wrap right. it up to keep ourselves gonna, on schedule. It's I'm, all good I got stuff. one more slide. So okay. um, just some things in terms of some upcoming things. Um, we have uh, some capital projects subject to budgeting, so, you know, UPS replacement at the Joint Public Safety Center, some um, storage and data refresh projects for our data centers, um, some enhanced desktop security um, software um, to allow us to, to detect um, more rapidly uh, potential security risks, um, and then um, investigating some opportunities to enhance um, our web presence and, and citizens' engagement, looking at things like mobile apps um, and, and a, a refresh of the website. And that's it. So I apologize. Oh, no, that's okay. I Good should have stuff. asked. You had two years, two years and one. Going. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> any, any questions or comments? Or? I, think, I think one, it's important to point out too that we had an incident this past year where you know, I won't get into the details of it, but it was somebody tried to, uh, you know, connect into our system, actually from a foreign country. And um, that was ineffective. It was, uh, they, our firewalls stopped it. Um, but I think what was more impressive was what the, our insurance company said about it. They actually used this as an example of how we could, how, how it was supposed to be done right and how the response was done so well and that, and then they compared it to another community who actually ended up being paying ransomware because of what they were able to get through, and it cost the town significant dollars uh, in terms of ransomware. So I do think that it's a credit to to Aaron's team and and to our employees and to all the the efforts that have gone into the training, the the uh, the, the cyber training that has been done during the past years, few years has been extraordinary. And I was doing it today, as a matter of fact. We all do it, and it's really important that we all do it. Um, and that it really has made a big difference in terms of our effectiveness and keeping the organization running when it's been challenging for a lot of places outside of Foxborough. And just thank you to you and your staff. I know you guys have worked so many hours. You know, I can't even imagine what it's like adding 2,800 pieces of equipment to your roster. <laughs> <laughs> Almost overnight, so thank you. Thank you for and all to Just being things. thoughtful, too, about the, the path forward, right? So um, we, were, we were fortunate, right, in, in one way, um, in terms of sometimes there is positive things that come from negative things, but um, there was a lot of funding, you know, to help the schools, you know, go one to one in terms of making sure that um, students had access to the technology they needed for remote learning. But those investments will pay forward in terms of um, what we're doing with digital learning strategies, what instruction looks like now, and how um, teachers and students are using technology for their for their learning. Um, so a blessing and a curse. We're able to get all this technology. The, the curse is, is being creative about finding sustainable funding mechanisms in terms of moving forward. Unfortunately, all of this equipment will become aged at the same time, right? So, um, you know, working with uh, Bill Yukna, the school business manager, and kind of engaging our, our local state representative and senator, um, talking about mechanisms that don't exist now, um, but there are similar mechanisms that exist for other types of um, capital um, projects and capital expenses to allow the town to, to um, be successful in terms of saving money or being able to fund these, these types of replacements and getting them more back on a regular replacement cycle where not everything is ex expiring at once, but also to phasing out and transitioning away. Um, people perceive Right? Sometimes they perceive things as a loss. So if every student has a computer, we don't need as many computer labs or computer stations in classrooms because our pedagogy is transitioning from that fixed computing to mobile computing. So we've been really quite aggressive about um, the strategies we're using to eliminate technology as it ages 
um, right, to, to be able to support technology efficiently, but then also not to continue to replace equipment just because we have it, right? So being thoughtful about that. So. Thanks, Aaron. Well, thank you so much. I hope you have a, a great night, and I, I apologize. No, no, no. Thank you for coming in. It was a great update. Exactly. Thank, you. Great. thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. All right. Next, we are going to move on to the planning department for uptown parking. We were here before, and now back to tell us the results. Although when I looked, there was a lot about rotary traffic, not parking. <laughs> Favorite subject. If you don't mind just telling everyone your name, although people may know who some of you all are. Sure. Um, I'm Paige Duncan. I'm the, my title now is a Director of Land Use and Economic Development. Um, so. Lance Delperiori, Town Engineer. Ken Fitzgerald, Police Lieutenant. Welcome. Okay. So um, I, too, have a slideshow to be shared. Um, if it works, let's get that. And of course, there we go. Um, so this is a continued discussion. As you all know, we uh, were in here last month and we put out a survey, but it wasn't really a survey. It was more just a means to collect comments and concerns and whatnot on uptown parking. As you know, um, we have the Marilyn Rodman Performing Arts Center that's thriving in my opinion, really um, building great capacity and, and has a lot of exciting action going on there. And then we have Shoveltown um, opening this summer, so we know that there's always been a concern about parking and we kind of wanted to get ahead of this. We actually fortunately have some stakeholders here tonight that came on their own volition, which is great because I think it'll make a more productive conversation. Um, we did keep the comment period open from May 10th till June 1st. Um, we got a bunch of comments. I am going to go through them tonight just because I didn't want to be the one to sort of pick and choose which ones we daylighted and which ones we didn't. So they're and kind we, of all we here. we do have them all. I don't know that we need to read every single one. Well, it's in my, my slideshow. We're going to work okay, through them. Okay, yep. So um, we're not going to. So we're, right now we're proposing some interim actions too. So just to whip through them, um, more handicapped parking spaces are needed, needed, concerned about when Shovel Town opens and there's an event. Um, this person thought that comment, uh, these are all different comments, by the way. These aren't necessarily from one person. They're just categorized sort of in general. Um, this person thought that parking was fine along the streets, but that the parking lot behind Central Street needed some love, um, which we all kind of know. Um, this person thinks less is more for signs and kind of wait till there's an issue, but they don't want the uptown to become more urban. Um, the veterans parking lot was mentioned. That was interesting because it brings up, which we'll talk about later, the issue of names and parking lot names and some confusion around that. I thought this was a great suggestion. Um, this comment here about small business owners will suffer when too many events happen. Um, I think this is an important one to, to sort of dwell on because I guess I disagree. I mean, certainly if you are jam-packed and there's zero parking, then that's a concern. I also have heard, we, you know, we, we deal with the, the businesses uptown, and you know, I know they want more customers, so drawing more people uptown is certainly a, a good thing. Um, and we've also found that there is ample parking, so it's really a matter of making sure, it, and I know you've all heard my spiel here, which I just say, again, it's a behavior issue, where if you go to the Rentham Premium Outlets, you will walk thousands of feet and not think twice about it, but when you come uptown, if you can't park in front of Gunther Tooties, then you can't get parking. So it's just sort of a mindset that we all kind of have to get to. Um, there's concerns about, you know, obviously cars not slowing on Central Street. You know, so a lot of us don't like parallel parking. Um, concerns about safety. Um, this was an interesting comment, I believe, from Bethany, was how does the town assist in supporting equitable access to Rock Hill um, between Market and the town common. Um, we actually are going to be talking about that. There's a proposal to stripe spaces on that one-way area. We think that will help a bit with just at least designating where you can park and where you can't. I'm not sure the equity issue is going to be easily resolved because it's all public parking. Um, but another great comment was that Bethany is willing to talk to the town and others about um, you know, possibly using some of their parking off of Market Street. So that's something I think we should explore. They do their own plowing page. Bethany, do they, have, do they contract and pay for I assume they do. We do I don't, the town doesn't do it, so I'm assuming they do it. Um, another interesting comment, why make changes when it's not needed? So it's so funny how there's the full gamut of, you know, the sky is falling and then everything's fine. Um, this one was very interesting to me. Uptown parking at Patriot Place. You could uh, allow craft to allow free event parking and resident access through the parkway. 
Um, we'll show the drone footage or the drone images, but um, there is not a shortage of parking uptown. So to, to shuttle people to Patriot Place just really isn't necessary. Um, this person obviously thinks that things went too fast. Um, you know, they're concerned about um, Shoveltown, the apartments above Shoveltown. This person wants to um, have sidewalks go from Chestnut Green to Route 1. I, hopefully they did the sidewalk survey that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, the Schneider lot, this was an interesting comment. Um, someone didn't realize how close it was. They thought it was way down near Schneider. So it was like, hmm, maybe that's a, you know, a perception issue. Um, and then people get into Central Street parking lot, and we've all very aware of the issues there, or maybe we're all, now. we all are very aware of the issues out there. Um, Foxborough Cable Access has some issues. You know, they need their truck to be accessible. It needs to be plugged in. Um, so I've been out there, you know, there's, there's dumpsters, there's big trucks going back there. So it's definitely something that could use some attention, the Central Street parking lot. Um, as I mentioned, that's also known as the veterans parking lot. So there's some confusion there. Um, there's some confusion around the ADA spaces back there, the accessible spaces. So I think we need to work with that. We're going to get into some solutions. And then the dumpster locations. Um, that's something, you know, it is a town lot on some of the land. It isn't on some, but we're, we've at the F Foxborough Common Business Collaborative been working with Jay Barrows, and we'd like to find a way to do coordinated trash. Now, that seems, it's a little... Um, I think ambitious in some ways, but Jay's committed to we want to walk around, talk to all the businesses that have dumpster back there, and see if there's a way to share them. And maybe we could designate where they go. Right now, a lot of them are on town property, so perhaps we are able to control that a little bit more. Um, but it's definitely something that needs a little attention. Um, and then, yes, to the favorite subject, the rotary. Um, <laughs> there's safety concerns because it makes it hard for pedestrians to come through. Um, pro cars not properly stopping or yielding when coming to the rotary. This is actually a bis big misinformation thing now, and I know people are upset about it, but when you are going from Main Street, you actually no longer have to merge. Um, I was stuck behind someone at a dead stop coming around the rotary waiting for the Main Street people. And, I did not beat, but I wanted to. So it's, you know, f folks are offended in some ways that there's no merge, and yet you also notice that there's no traffic down to Dairy Queen. So this is something that's been done on purpose. Um, leave the angled parking around the common, which the board did. Uh, return to things to the way we used to be, put patrols or tra traffic cameras, and uh, Tana Fitzgerald can discuss about that, but have blue books and whatnot, and basically driver education, we should be doing that. And then this one I want Lance to just take a minute to speak to because I think it's important to let folks know, you know, the, all this work that was done on the Rotary. We did do phase one up by the um, Orpheum as part of town project, but then the stuff that was done last year was done through some grants. So I don't know where, and I know there's concerns because the brick is too low, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Um, so what was the point? Um, well, I think so people are upset that there's no, you know, when we had the cones over in yeah. front of South and, right. you know, South and School and Central, that right. was good, although a lot of people didn't like them, but some people did because it made people drive. But right. we're back to the brick, and there's a reason for that. And So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you all probably remember, actually, how it went down, so I'm, I'm not really oh, saying yeah, it do, for yeah. you, <laughs> um, but, I'll, you know, we can talk about it. Um, so, really, I mean, that was part of a grant funding. There was no town funding that was put into that, so in terms of money spent, there was no money spent directly from you know, the town budget anyway, that was part of the grant, the part of the study to look at that. Ultimately, I think we found um, <clears throat> the lane splitting worked, but I think at the time we decided to go with a less, um, you know, uh, how, how to lower phrase profile. it. Yeah, lower profile. For plowing solution. is what I remember, right? Uh, yeah, because of the plowing was a big issue and a big School concern buses in the town. and School buses. tractor trailers. Um, you know, there was discussion that perhaps at a later date um, we could invest, you know, more money and potentially make it more of a like a sloped raised you know ele elevated situation but i think the in the interim solution was to put sort of a low profile situation like we have currently um you know and it, it doesn't work unfortunately yeah could we ever get back to like yeah. something in the work. middle like you know the things that stick up that they're there but if you run over them they yeah like the uh like yeah could we use the time between now and the winter again to like continue to train people because i know i live off self and i'll think i'm ready to go and people i mean they don't even have a blinker they just whoop, right right across I've, I've seen it yeah <laughs> and even you know with pedestrians like Paige and and bill and i right. walked um a group up to the common and i mean crossing at that crosswalk was like taking your life in your hand so yep. i know with as we talk about parking it's it may not even be the distance that people have to walk but how safe they feel 
yeah. you know, walking well, the last from minute lane shifting is, is still an issue, unfortunately. Yeah. It, you know, because you give people an opportunity to do the wrong thing or the convenient thing, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to they're gonna take it. And, Lance, uh, anecdotally, I mean, people move. So when they're trying to go down South Street, people yeah. move to the inside lane because that's where they think they're supposed to go. I right. saw, I've seen, like, I had a person who didn't know where they were yep. driving through Foxborough Common. They tried to pull on, off of Main Street onto the Common, and they stopped and waited and looked. So you're like, okay, they don't, sure. they don't, they're not <laughs> from here. Coming around, they see South Street and they see Central, and they assume the outside lane is South Street only. Yeah. And so they move in. Yeah. That and so she moved in, and I'm coming around, and I'm going around to go around to um, you know towards Birchwood where I live. Right. And she's sort of stopped on the inside trying to go, go right across. Right. And it's just like, she doesn't really know. She's not trying to do the wrong thing or she's not being lazy. She just doesn't know Black where to go. Maybe she's going slow. Yeah, yeah, she was stopped. She was like, yeah. what It's almost we? worse sometimes though, when people yeah. are stopped, you know, then Yeah, you're... well, she didn't stop. She would have plowed right into me because I was coming around like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and when we were walking uptown, Jay Barrows actually said, when we were trying to cross and the discussion came up, he said, what about putting some of the flower buckets yeah. on the street? Because that would be temporary. Well, it would be messier, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he said, we can yeah. do, like, the, you know, the stanchions or something, yeah. like, you know, that can be struck and not exactly, yeah. you know. Plus, I mean, I mean just it slows people down in general. Like, anything we can do to slow people down. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think having those, you know, the, the, line, you know, the delineators down the center line does slow you down sort of instinctually. And it forces you to commit to a lane earlier on. Um, versus then, you know, the last minute, you know, making that decision. Yeah. So and then, you know, it, and if you didn't get over in time, then you might have to take another loop, you know. And, and that's that's just where it is. So. Lieutenant Fitzgerald, I'm just curious. Is that something you guys can ticket people for? Like, they're going over the white line, so or is that a no? It would be, in theory, it would be a marked lane violation. Okay. Is painted brick a marked lane uh-huh. if you wrote them a money ticket and they went to court right mm, right because the rest of the way around there you have dashed lines uh-huh. so you can change lanes uh-huh. the, really the bigger issue there might be like a improper lane change or a fail to yield right of way because it's almost like a passing violation but they're on the left so they can pass and, and that's a, the, the brick happens really far down now right yeah you can so, you can cut across just before the yeah, brick. You can, right. and you're you're basically making like an unsafe lane change. Yeah. So it's a violation. Now here's the here's the catch, and it ties in the parking. So you're driving around you're in the police car. You see the person do that right in front of you. Where do you pull them over? Right. Because now you're on Central Street. And this car's on both sides. Right. So you wait till they get down by CVS. Well, now they stop, and now you need somebody to come direct traffic around. Right. So right. it's that's a tricky one to even deal with, because. Where do you stop the person? Yeah. So it's it just it's that's a tough spot right there. It really it is. is. Yeah, I, I think that's why I like those cones. I, I, I yeah, like I think those we all cones. do. Yeah. Not only because you have to commit sooner, <laughs> um, but also as someone I've said for six years who walks uptown all the time, yeah. it's safer with the cones. When those cones were up there, and I was coming back from town hall here, going to my house. You know now where the cars are going to be when you cross. You don't have to worry about that inside car as you've committed to start to walk, cutting across the two lanes of traffic. I mean, what I, what I can tell you on this, and this is, I don't want to throw Lance under the bus, but the three <laughs> E's of traffic enforcement, right? Engineering is number one, followed by education, followed by enforcement. So first, whatever it is has to be designed and built, then it has to be educated, and then comes the enforcement. And we know the education doesn't work here because the issue is basically somebody who's not from here. They're following Google, they're following Waze, they're going from Rentham to Mansfield, and here they are in, in here, and they're, oh, I got to, and they just cut across. So if it's engineered differently with the big unattractive things, that stops that. And then that takes away the need for enforcement, but everyone in town has to look at these ugly plastic things. So the engineering can fix the problem, it's just not pretty. Mm-hmm. Well, education, definitely. I mean, yeah. in terms of, you know, even just take Main Street, for example, where I think most people at this point can agree that that was a fairly, you know, appropriate, you know, good fix up there. But the education in terms of people are still adjusting to that change. You know, I think it's it takes a while for people to relearn their habits. Um, you know, I think, you know, yes, there's always going to be the new person who enters the fray and who's not, you know, who's never driven the rotary before. And then, you know, they'll 
they might have an issue. But you know, it's the routine drivers that are really the issue. And if you keep changing things too often, it you know it continues to be a mm -hmm. problem. But um, I'm not in disagreement in terms of maybe you, you putting some sort of delineator down the center line of that strip. You know, but it's not you know maybe not the full sort of cone setup that we had previously because you know that was based on a line, kind of a whole lane shift we did where we kind of widened the gap and now that's been reset to set the parking lot spots back to where they were and allow for did that. Did Chris say you guys could put something that was raised that was portable? Was there some discussion at one of our one of our um, raised portable for, for? I think that was before the brick went in. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Yeah, I think it, I think he said. Well, we'll try the brick because those rubber speed it looks like those curbs. lag bolts, that, like the rubber curbing. I think we talked right. about that yeah. at one point. Right. Yeah, yeah, those did, for did, a while. But, but as soon as, it, like, if you knew there was a snowstorm coming, one, one you, guys could, <laughs> you guys could pop it up, pop it up so it wouldn't affect the um And, and the luckily, we right. have nice weather right now. Like, if I don't yeah. think it has to be the full-blown barrels, but if there's something yeah. between that that sticks up that an 18-wheeler could still get through, I do. Yeah. I almost think that, that the island is so wide, but where it's not raised it's not necessarily brick red you almost lose the white line a little bit you know to show you that you should not cross it because the two white lines are so far apart i agree um yeah it's something i need to you know i can certainly talk with chris about so we should probably get back to parking so then. we'll take yeah <laughs> you know, I, I think it's important to talk about this because yeah. this is something you know everybody loves to, to complain about and maybe doesn't always understand the background of it you know this has all been very deliberate we're trying like heck to figure out the best way to do it you know maybe there's i mean we are very hesitant to put up signs but perhaps there's better warning signs you know when you get to that merge area well you don't merge you know maybe it says do not stop for merge or something right. and then maybe as you get around maybe you have something on the ground that shows you know those directional arrows and again i am not an engineer but sort of for those that are driving along nervously, they see a sign that says, you know, left, you know, left turn only, and then, you know, you have something that kind of does it. Mm -hmm. I would defer to the experts on that, and I don't, we don't want to clutter things up, but perhaps there's a little more education that can go on as you're driving around there. So And slowing people down for safety related to parking. Because yeah. that. that's what the one thing about the, you know, the different spots that, like, I remember from the farmer's market last year, it was felt so much slower and safer up oh, there. And it absolutely. really did make everything safer it mm -hmm. felt so but we won't get into that we'll just take a look at that you know we wanted to let folks know that we're not unaware that people are cutting across and that it is dangerous and we we do plan on rec you know addressing it the good news right. is we got a grant for all of that other stuff and um, we had always planned on doing this phase two you know with town funds like we did with the first one but we didn't have to so now we'll take a look at what we can do and we'll be coming can you talk that. a little bit too about the flashing crosswalk yep, thing we're getting to I, that. Okay, okay sorry just quick question uh, for the lieutenant is have we seen an increase in, in accidents in the rotary because of this no um the flashing lights i tried to get from plain ridge on the gaming commission grant last year but <laughs> we didn't have enough correlation to casino traffic and a side note but the um i ran the numbers every time i apply for the Ma gaming commission grant because you know obviously 140 is the kind of a you know main connector road and 2020 accidents go way down obviously COVID. 21 they slowly start creeping back up but they're still below where they were in 19 and 22 now we've only got five months of data really so um there's been nothing spectacular about downtown if memory serves i think the entirety of 140 including all the different bird street school street all the variations of south street downtown here were i think it was accounted for 67 of the crashes where a crash report was written last year but a lot of that is down commercial street where the highway the ramps right. some of it's up closer to route one um some certainly is around here but so it's was 67 out of call it 400 so less than 20 percent we're on 140 as a whole i didn't narrow down downtown for that one so but there's been no drastic change no okay so um, one of the things we did do um, is run a drone during one of the larger um, events at the Rodman. It was during the Rodman Awards. Um, and I'm going to show you some images from that. But one of the takeaway from that is that we need to do a better job informing and educating people on where to park because there was ample parking uptown. Um, just by way of um, exciting news, it, it, 
we haven't yet, it hasn't been funded by the governor yet, but um, Jay Barros and um, Senator Feeney have designated $50,000 out of a budget item that's in front of the governor or about to go to the governor um, for some Central Street parking lot assistance or veterans parking lot as we call it. We definitely know we need to look at accessible parking and we'll be working with the Disability Commission on that. Um, as you mentioned, the names of parking lots, we should be thinking about that and making sure um, we have clear names. The rotary improvements, we explained that who paid for those and uh, what's coming up next. We're going to take a look at that. Um, how to fix the current issues, we already talked about that. And then the sidewalk plan, um, there's a survey out right now, so folks who are concerned about sidewalks should take a look at that. So the drone image findings, um, they're taken on May 19th. There were 215 people in attendance. Um, we had hoped to do one other one event, but the, the, fire, uh, the police department got busy. So um, we're shooting for another major Rodman event, maybe the 24th, assuming that the, there's enough um, people going. Um, but our findings were that the town hall lot was less than a quarter full. Um, the Schneider lot had only four spaces used and uh, that we clearly need to do a better job advertising the parking locations. Um, we also, um, and we'll get into what we're talking about next, we also need to create a brochure or a map on showing people where to park, make it you know, physical so that the venues can have it, you know, to hand out, have it digital so that folks can access it. And then we were even thinking of you know, maybe something could be put up you know, whether it's near the, the Rodman Center or, or uh, the Common or something, actually something mounted or something so that people can actually refer to it. Um, we also want to work with the venues to let visitors know. So then, I know um, Catherine already says they do that. They, before you come, they have that information that goes out. So that, that event, though, will be interesting because the Maryland Rodman Awards are pretty much local people. So that event is very different than it, any other event. That's yeah, up like there the, because the, it's the, the Foxborough people, so it will be interesting, you know, really to look at that one because I think be, that's yeah. kind of a very targeted event. And I think, what do you guys have like 380, 400 seats? So it was about half full. So, okay, yeah, just so for like some perspective, we're looking for the next thing about that event. Well, and where did everybody park? Even I'll for show this, you for this. this is, so, this oh. is the night of, so okay. this is during the event. This is how many people were in town hall parking up, and you can see that great picture of yeah. town hall. Um, yeah. This is the Schneider lot. I mean, and you can see in the middle there, there's a little white line. Um, that's that's our sec from down below those four yeah. spots. That's the town designated area. Um, this is the Central Street lot. As you can see, there's ample parking. It's kind of busy looking, and that's the story of that lot. But there's there's parking back there. I wouldn't want to go back there at night, but I get it. Um, this you kind of got to. Get, you know, get your bearings, but this is like as if you were over the Schneider lot, looking down Bird Street, railroads at the closest. So as you can see, there's lots of folks, you know, parked down Bird, um, and then on the Common. Um, so Mechanic pretty full. Mechanics pretty full. And then this one was interesting to me. This is Rock Hill and Market. So Rock Hill, one way is jammed, but at least they're all on one side, so that's good. And there's a few down, further down on the two-way section of Rock Hill, and then you can see Market to the left there, there's parking, and then I'm assuming some of these parking, Parkers and Bethany are from there. So that was uh, the interesting, and then this is the common. Well, um, that's what I mean, because I was looking there. at the slides as you were talking, and I was like, well, we still have open spots mm -hmm. on the common. So like right. yeah like so it's it's and very even Bethany's really not that full yeah yeah and then even Judy's well Judy's has quite a bit um, in her lot so I think people park there um, so and then this is a little closer view of Rock Hill and Bethany Church so that's where <laughs> folks are parking so it was an interesting the drone footage is is priceless as mm -hmm. you can imagine so based on this. Here's our recommendations. Um, we're gonna when the DPW does the uh, Rock Hill Street. Uh, striping, which I believe is any time. It's sort of weather and schedule dependent. Oh, I think we're waiting uh, for the construction to kind of wrap out. Of oh, okay. Of and, and do we think it makes sense to have one side of Rock Hill with parking on one side and one side on the other from a police <coughs> perspective, engineering perspective? I mean, because I know out of town. No sign, you know. The yeah, that seems to help things. But even looking at the drone footage, it's weird how one section of Rock Hill parking is on the left and then, you know, below market it's on the right. It's, it is confusing for out of towners, but. Is it because of construction? Right now, yeah. is that what? Right, so it's. Yeah, but even still, there won't be many when spots on that side after. Yeah, it's going to go back to. It's going to always be on the Bethany yeah. Theater side, because um, that's where you get more space. So on Rock Hill, does it make sense to have it on the right, or should it be on the left? Those people are. Are they all facing? They're facing. Up they're hill facing too? up Rock Hill. Yeah. Yep. Right. So. 
So this is where, like, I brought it to Jen at the at the Orpheum a couple of times. Like, I was dropping my daughter off, and there was people on both sides of Rock Hill, <laughs> south of Market. Which yeah. this the sign seemed to have fixed it, yeah. but it's still like clunky and awkward if you're from out of town. I, I, w- I mean, I would agree. Put everyone on one side. Put maybe you know two or three signs down the lower end, no parking this side to push everyone so everyone's on the same side of the street. But ultimately, it's a one way up the top, so it's and just keep in mind if there's a car on one side of Rock Hill. Two cars cannot right. pass. Right. Right. Which, I don't know. I mean, I know in, I live in Franklin, and, and we have that. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's not every day that happens. It's sort of congested times. And you're going to have some certain times where you have to sort of wait while the next person goes. You don't want to do it every day, but, you know, every so often when there's a big event. Um, so we're going to add an accessible space on Rock Hill up near, closer to the theater and the Bethany. Um, we definitely want to work with the Disability Commission on locations uptown. We, we heard loud and clear and we, we agree that, that we want to make sure that the spaces that are there are in the right place throughout uptown. Um, you know, on the Common, all those areas, we want to make sure they're in the right place. Look at the Central Street parking lot and all that to just do a sort of a gut check on all of us to make sure we have it right. So we'll work with the Disability Commission on that. Um, for outreach, we were going to create a parking map and brochure for wide distribution. We want to work with the businesses to advertise the parking locations and encourage Shoveltown and the Maryland Rodman Center to actively inform parking locations. Um, one idea that was an interesting one is if the businesses encourage employees to say park down at the Schneider lot, it wouldn't look as desolate, mm-hmm. you know, and they could maybe travel down there as a group at the end of shift. I know that's a sort of behavioral thing, but like having folks down there, one of the things that mentioned was, you know, when there's like a single woman, doesn't necessarily want to be down at the Schneider lot alone. And you pull in there and there's two cars and you're like, is this okay? You know, and you're, you're a little more nervous. So it's like, how can we all together work together to make it less creepy and, you know, more accessible to can everybody? Can we paint something right there, like before the track saying like parking? Like on the pavement, just it doesn't look when you go down Bird. Yeah. Like it, like there's we we all know that there was some sign issues that were missing a sign. But yeah, we're gonna prove that. Like there almost needs to be something if you're coming straight down Bird to say like it's okay to park here. Well, we're gonna add. So that's this yeah. this slide is about that. We're gonna add directional signs from the common. We did order one, but the arrow was going the wrong way. So over in front of O'Reilly, it'll say parking this way. And then when you get to the end of Bird, there would be a straight sign, you know, a sign saying parking this way. Right now it's only when you're on railroad. The other thing we talked about um, at the FCBC is um, adding flower buckets. We have some extra flower buckets from our shared street grant. And so we'll add a couple flower buckets down there. If, if necessary, the DPW could trim back brush and kind of make it look more welcoming, almost like, here, look at this. This is some place you want to be. And then we thought about renaming. I don't know how Schneider would feel about that, but I think, you know, again, the Schneider lot sounds farther away than uptown than it mm-hmm. is. And maybe we come up with a different name, you know, whether the it's... The uptown Schneider lot. Yeah, right. So something like that. Adding the word uptown, maybe that would, mm-hmm. would help by giving it a designation that sounds closer. Uh, Paige, one more thing on yep. the uh, Schneider lot. Uh, I know a couple of people have mentioned to me the lighting. Okay. It's kind of a dark lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Even that end of bird's pretty dark. Take a look at it and see. Yeah, would you agree? With where? That that end of bird is a little dark, even like at that at that intersection. Oh, um, there I think there. I mean, people are comfortable parking on a street, but when you send them into sort of a sketchy warehouse parking lot, literally, with over the railroad tracks is like there's you know growth. Um, It's dark. If I wouldn't want, you know my mother, daughter, whoever, sister, parking there mm-hmm. if she was the only car. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, there's usually one, two, zero mm-hmm. cars there. People don't like to So that's why we kind of mentioned solar lights. I don't know if yeah. that's enough. I don't know if DPW has no, the mean, ability yeah, to add the lighting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a possibility, definitely. So I think it's definitely something we've we'll talked about. Take a look at that. Taking a look at, you know, clearing the brush and adding lighting, potentially. So. Getting it just more, make it look. And then Rock Hill and Market, um, we're going to get striped. I thought it was sooner, but we'll we'll check. With, I, mean, I think Chris is on Zoom. He can always chime in. Um, so I don't know when that's happening. I thought it was sooner uh, than later. I didn't think we were going to wait for construction just because striping is not that big of a deal. Yeah. Maybe I mean, push sure. it just yeah. to keep it. But it looked like, at least with that last picture, it looked like people were doing it right. But there is the accessible parking issue, so it would be nice to get an accessible spot. Um, we talked about whether um, we should have any limitations on the, the lower part of Market Street, but then the concern was is that if you restrict parking, then you're restricting it for the residents who live there, you know, 365 as well. So we thought maybe keep it um, as it is and sort of deal with things as they come. Um, obviously open to input on that. And then we thought we should work with Bethany to see what they're, you know, sort of what 
the options are out there and what they're looking for and you know um and that area the area you guys are using for staging at bethany that's not paved right it's not so paved. maybe that like once that's done there is a lot there i don't know what their plan is if, if they want it but you know there's definitely some space there and then another thing we talked about is maybe something striped in front of the theater that it's like for drop off like if you're with an elderly person you need to be able to drop off there and you know sometimes <laughs> when I w was there, like a car will sit there or a car will park there. So making sure, you know, that there is some sort of drop off if uh, someone needs to just literally pull in and pull out to get someone with maybe some accessibility issues into the theater. So we'll take a look at that as well. And then the Central Street parking lot, um, I mentioned the $50,000 grant, going to work with Disability Commission. Um, we are going to start with this grant, but we were trying to find ways to improve the layout and function a lot. It's extremely challenging, and I actually have an image here. Um, Oh, it's at the very end, but I'll get to that. But um, it's challenging because the land, the property owners actually own a certain portion <laughs> behind their buildings, and then the town owns it. So, like, so, you know, at the, I wasn't here when it was all created. I hear it was very difficult to get very, it done. Very difficult. It took a long time. Yeah. To so get I don't want to fool ourselves, but I do think that there's a way. We're going to try our best to see if we can make it better, and then you know maybe and everyone has to work together. I mean, I'm going to be frank. Like on the Foxborough Common Business Collaborative, this is a couple businesses but we really don't have that like we need that whole corner to kind of like work together work with us not just like and eh, not my problem you know it is it's everyone's parking lot and we really need to make sure that everyone tunes oh, in and works it. together for kind of the greater good of all up there darn i thought i had uploaded a picture of the central street parking you did lot. yeah you had one it was a picture oh good well i didn't get it on this version because i had done it um so we we will it's be on pushing. slide 15 though okay um, we will be pushing for that um, as we, you know, as we move forward. And then um, flashing crossing lights. Um, this is big news that there was a grant, I yeah. believe. Yeah, we got a grant. I think about twenty-five thousand should get us about five uh, flashing uh, lights. I think the we're not they're not going to see the money probably till the end of the year, um, and then we can put an order in and get the lights. So they may get installed at the end of this year. Hopefully. And is is, is, is it two? So it's like five. the library, uh, yeah, like, there? like the ones. By but the I think library. Chris had told us that like it takes two to do a crosswalk. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So oh. the idea is potentially we're looking at maybe doing it on the mid mid block crossing on School Street there. Okay. And then using the remaining three on the uh, South Street intersection here on the outer points okay. potentially. Well, that so that's so that's the initial hmm. thought because um, we we have enough for five. Hmm. Um, so that's yes, like you said, you need two typically hmm. for a pair. So. Um, and then the overnight snow emergency parking, again, we're not there yet, but that says, you know, as the, if things, you know, the residential starts to open up, if we start to get complaints about people, you know, hogging prime spaces uptown, you know, we want to be able to have a place. I'm more worried about like a snow emergency. You, you got to get them off the roads. You can't do it. Where can they go? So we, we're in discussions with that. You know, maybe it's the town hall lot and they have to be out by like 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., something like that. So we're not there yet, but those are just sort of things in the back of mind. And then the other big issue is this takeout parking areas um, you know it is not equitable right now there are some that have you know one or two 15 minute parking spaces there's you know we know lovely pizza wants one we haven't given them one so it's I feel like the the board of the town needs to maybe come up with a policy you know we have for example I hate to be the bad guy but like primos they you know they have spots designated and they're not open sometimes when the restaurant next door is open so it's like it's never allowed to be those spots aren't allowed to be used and yet they're not open so it almost feels like we just need to make sure there's some fairness across the board and we don't want to hurt any businesses we totally understand the need for them at times but um, I guess we're looking for you know that's your decision as well that it's a fun one but it's like you know how do we make sure it's fair because you know we have some that have it and then we have some that don't you know and and we're not trying to give any more but the ones that already have it you know how do we handle that so i don't know what this board feels and then also the the delivery drivers you know uber eats and doordash and stuff we want to make sure they know where to go and if there's an alternate you know maybe go in the back if you're a central street business make sure they're not tying up both front although at night we don't see as many trouble up at central it's more right. so it's there's so many nuances to it and we don't want to hurt any one business but we also don't want to treat these other businesses unfairly and as we see folks requesting new things you know if we have 15 minutes in front of every takeout joint we'll you know we're, where we're we at so i don't know how the board wants to handle that but i did happen to notice in a, the only reason i noticed the um 
the Primo one I call is that it, I notice it has yeah, orange tape around it now, so it's like really highlighted. So I don't know that we did that. Um, no. Yeah, so it's, and I noticed too, like Subway it, in front of their building has this giant sign that says "Parking Out Back." Like, is there a sign we need to get on Central? Or is there a sign we need to get like in front of South Street Dry Cleaner Liquor Store? You know, how can the businesses really promote those? Because I mean, I, I think you almost feel safer parking out back and walking in that way than you know trying to parallel park or and all that. It's it's yeah. just. And I mean, we easier. do have some funds in the sign account, so we might even be able to help these businesses mm -hmm. with, you know, whether it's a sandwich board. Like I noticed <clears throat> Subway sometimes has one spot in front of theirs reserved for pickup, but I think they take that away at night. I'm not 100% sure. So again, it's like they're okay. They didn't, I don't know that they asked permission for that. They just do it. So this is where it's like, <laughs> how do we make sure the rules are, right. are fair right. and um, not trying to call out people, but. It makes Obviously. sense, you know, not even just fair, but it's going to make sense for everyone up right. there. So. so that's something we don't necessarily have an easy answer for. We just kind of want to, we're looking to you guys too as well. Um, and that's kind of what we have for right now. And we do have, luckily we have Frank from Shoveltown. We have Catherine from the uh, Marilyn Rodman. We have Judy from Judy's Florist. So um, I don't know if there's any specific questions or discussions or if they have any questions, concerns, but... I mean, I would, if you guys have anything to say, I would love to hear from you guys. It would just keep it brief. We're Feel a little off track. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just got to come up. Sure. And I think, you know, unfortunately, Frank, everyone's got their eyes on shovel town. There's not a lot of parking. <laughs> I got a you know, big target on my back, yeah, guess, so. Yeah. so um, first thing, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. But um, Frank Eltieri, Shovel Town Brewery. Um, you know, I, I think there's not a huge parking problem. I think it's a, an educational problem. We need to t tell the people where to where there's available parking, and then anything we can do to um, increase the visibility and directions to those parking. Like I, I'm sure no one knows the Schneider lot at all, you know. And we're going to do that for sure. We're going to make sure that we're we're broadcasting to our customers where the parking is. And you know, we want to be fair to our neighbors. We want to be a good neighbor. We, we don't want you know people parking in somebody's driveway or anything like that so we're gonna make sure that we communicate as as well as we can to our customers where the available parking is and I know you guys are obviously in talks with with Bethany given you're doing some storage there now you know hopefully you guys can you know instead of it being the town that takes it on maybe it's you know a partnership with you guys that you guys have just you know throwing things out there so question for you sure where are you gonna have your employees park well, we do it today. We, we park our employees in the very back location. I would, I would probably suggest they park in the, in the uh, municipal lot here and walk. This, this, is, this is probably the best lot um, I, for I, that. I agree, type. And, and I'm glad to hear you yeah. say that. But we, we 15, don't, 20... I get, you know, when I see one of our employees park in a prime spot, I let them know that's not appropriate. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and then have you seen when the when there's a big weight going, it really gets jumping in this lot. You know, like that yeah. they, that's also their main lot and it's just there's a lot going on, you know, so Yeah, I, I guess a couple of things, you know, I wanted to focus on I, we want to work with you on making parking as 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 uh, advantageous as possible. I did want uh, Paige brought it up a little bit. I think there's an opportunity for an Uber spot or maybe just an Uber signage, Uber pickup point where an Uber can get in and out quickly. We should think about that. Uh, we do have customers that that you know take Uber and and then it's becoming bigger Uber whatever the ride share is today. And and then the I'll leave the last one, you know, just not to monopolize the, the conversation here, but um, I think we would like to see something, and I, you mentioned it also, slowing down the traffic a little in front of the building. Mm -hmm. um, a raised, si a raised um, crosswalk, I, it worked in Easton and Main Street in Easton, they put two of them in. Um, it really, I mean, that was like, people were speeding down Main Street, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour, and they put the two, road humps in and it's, it slowed the traffic down and and it no one seems to be complaining about it the traffic is still proceeding mm -hmm. you know and it just helps out so that's those were my kind of big points that hey, I wanted quick to question across. from you guys just as a business owner I'm just curious do you guys have the ability to like say where like your uber or your doordash pin is you know for like in the app do you I don't know about in the app, but usually you you let them know where okay. the pickup point. Okay. Yeah, so I think just, it I is in curious. the. You can put it in okay. the app. Yeah, we don't use it, but okay. We use the Uber. So. Just to add to the Uber 
comment. I think one of the things we want to avoid with the designation of short-term pickup parking is qualifying it to a specific business or, I guess, mm -hmm. in this case, a specific service even. You know, this is public parking. We mm -hmm. want to keep it as public parking. You know, this, yeah, so we talked about maybe a five-minute time frame as being enforceable potentially by the police, um, 15 minutes being, you know, too long mm -hmm. potentially. Um, so the idea of yeah. maybe developing a process for the board to determine where it's appropriate to allocate, you know, set these five-minute parking, quick pickup parking spots, mm -hmm. and maybe setting a time frame with that that does cut off at a certain time at night or something like that? Or Well, I, yeah, I was thinking about that, the, the, the Primo's issue, and I think they're closed at, I don't know if they close at 8 four. or 9. Four. And four. four. And they're closed two or three days a week. And like next door Sunday, is open until 10, 11, 12. Sunday, for example, they're not open at all. That's probably a big day next door. You know, just as we think about it, doing things that make sense, you know. I'll caveat that for those watching, we'll never ticket any one of those 15-minute spots if Primo's is closed. Okay. So <laughs> they, they don't, I don't think anyone has to worry about that, but they, no one knows that. Right. Well, we don't want to park here. We're, gonna we're not going right. to. Catherine or Judy, did you guys have anything additionally to add? One thing I'd say down on 19 Market Street. Frank? I, um. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not responsible for that. I didn't know if you'd heard. I know, yeah. But, I saw um, you in there working the other day, though, when I went around. I was like, there's Frank putting the doors in or something. <laughs> um, I, I can't answer. You got to come up. To the, uh, to the he doesn't market. know. I'm he trying to remember know. what it is. It's. It's. Um, I know they're trying to wrap up the the apartments above the fire station. I think maybe they're finishing up that, and then they'll start demo. They're taking the funeral home and 15 to 17 Market Street down at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's just. It seems like everything's going a little slower. I mean, I think materials are harder to get. Everything's just taking forever as we all see but i know it's it's i believe it's within the next couple months that they're intending but we've been hearing that for a little bit but as you see things are just taking longer yeah and while you're here frank i believe there's an update on shovel town are you comfortable giving anything or not yet not yet um, okay i don't i'm not okay. sure i know what you're talking about <laughs> you open or the, yeah the, the open date like oh well it's still up in the air to be honest, I mean we're we're working toward September. Okay. At this point, okay. But I, I don't, you know, okay. it's hard to tell. Um, it's it's more complicated because of the other parts of the at that yeah. have to be finished also. And one of the things that you're talking about delays, we've been waiting for National Grid to put the transformer in for for it's been a couple months now. Okay. So so we're the, there's been some delays. Um, I did one more thing, and I'm sorry, I'll speed this up, but um, I asked the town of Easton, Easton the same kind of question with the, with, there were, they require uh, businesses to have a certain amount of spots, but those spots could be for times like Primo, where he's only open till four. Mm -hmm. So you find out, ask them to only reserve the spots when the, when the business is open. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So on the sign you said 15 minutes parking from whatever it is, two, 12 to 4 or, or whatever, you know, the whatever, yeah. whatever their hours are. Yeah. yeah. And th that's what I've asked. And then most businesses do have some of their own parking, like you guys will. Like, yeah. I don't know the details, but like Lovely Pizza, I would hope their 15-minute spot could be on the Silver Camel side. Silver Camel's not generally open as much at night. I look at you just because you live right there. I don't know if you know, but like I would hope <laughs> that the first choice for all – the restaurants and businesses would be to have their 15 minute parking be on their off street, their, yeah, off street if we can yeah. and really only reserve the, the on street ones to hopefully where we're really in a predicament or a tight spot yeah or as you know sometimes up at the stadium now here's the thing who would do this but you know they have like all these um disabled spots and it's probably for like a game day mm -hmm. so there's all these spots and then they put those little mm things on top yeah, of the little covers little, on them yeah little covers yeah. and then i mean then it's i mean it's still a parking spot but you know i guess ma'am creating then who's gonna put them on take right. them off who's right. gonna but maintain I mean, it yeah. but, but i mean like what are you gonna do put on this little sign like you know 15 minute for you know sunday da, 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 right. this yeah, you know or, or, or maybe just do a 12 to 4 if those are the hours mm -hmm. you know but i guess um you know if word word will get out that Primo's isn't open, it's, it's a parking spot. So people will, you know, that they're not going to get towed or ticketed or whatnot. But. Or maybe that's part of the privilege. I mean, you get this designated thing, but you have to remember to cover it, or, you know, when you're closed or something. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. something. Oh, yeah. You know, but I that's, didn't even think it's it hard a great to do, idea. But, you know, it's, it's yeah. part of, you know, it's, it's a, a good privilege idea. type yeah, thing. It's so. a great idea. All right. Any other comments from <clears throat> Judy? Judy, nothing? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Christine. 
So we have a little homework, as you can yeah. see, but we're, it's a work in progress. And if any board members have ideas, you know, on this, the parking, the, the five minute, 15 minute, whatever it is, please forward them to me. Because we know it's a very touchy issue and we're not trying to make anybody's life difficult, but we also do think it needs to be fair. And as, you know, we're going to see more uptown. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, in the master plan, people designated uptown as the area most needing improvement. So we're trying to do this. You know, we're trying to bring businesses uptown. There's going to be more people uptown. Town. It's going to start to bustle. We're going to, the bakery is going to open. You know, we're starting to see action. So parking is always going to be at a premium, but there is a lot. It's just sort of making it accessible, making it fair, and, and educating everybody where to go. So. And we do have the Foxborough Common Business Collaborative that meets the first Wednesday of every month. Encourage everyone to attend. I will tell you a lot of the time it's the same six, seven people. Maybe yep. half of us don't have businesses. <laughs> but, um, you know, we really need to all work together to just, you know, Hopefully. Well, and you said just a thought about five minute parking. Now, I work in a restaurant, people come to get takeout. Very rarely, it's perfect timing for them to come in, their food is ready, I've gone over, I can take their money and out. I don't know how, I don't necessarily know how Shoveltown is going to run theirs, if it's, they're going to a, a, the, a bartender or they're going to a hostess station. But if you want the five minutes just to kind of be like, Okay, well, this means you need to be in and out. Around five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> then, then maybe. But if you're going to enforce it, five minutes isn't. I agree. Isn't really, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but your 10 to 15 minute, I think, would be the same thing. If that's what they're pulling up for, is to get takeout. They're going to be. They're going to be in as soon as they can get their takeout. They're going to be out. Mm -hmm. You know. So I, I think. Five minutes isn't really realistic. And we'll have to, on Shoveltown, we'll have to work with Mr. True. King. He owns yeah. the, we have that, that, set, that lot in there. And, yeah. and, you know, some of it is designated must be residential because the residential needs the parking. The commercial is not allowed to be off site. But we certainly, and there needs to be an accessible parking space there too. But I think that might be an area where you have maybe takeout parking or something like that so that folks who are spending 15 minutes are actually on private property, not up by the theater and in these yeah. prime parking spaces. But we'll have to work through that. When's the next time? We're, we're going to talk. So, what's the next step? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait. To, we'll wait to hear from you. Well, I mean, you guys. We're, we're actively. So we got a little more time with yeah. Shuttletown not right. opening until September. Right. But it's, it's something we'll go back to the drawing board on. We'll come up with some suggestions, I guess. And um, we are working on the map. You know, Ryan's away for a couple weeks. We did um, today start looking at other community maps and seeing what looked good. And we're going to see if we can do that in house, where we create the map and then get it up digitally and, and then start sharing it. So we are. It is a work in Signage. progress. Are you going to take the cleanup too? It's a lot. To, yeah, to, to, are you going to be on point for making sure we get just like cleaned up in front of the Schneider lot that it doesn't look like overgrown railroad tracks? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we'll order some signs <laughs> and, and lights um, yes. and lighting and yep. we'll look into yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to, we have some homework. Okay. Stay and tuned. Last, and last word on this is that two years ago we talked about doing the planning before everything's open. Yeah. And you're doing that. So congratulations on doing that because this is the time to get it done. Yes. You can't do it. Uh, a year after the businesses are all open because everybody's going to be going, where are we going to go? And it's always going to be a work in progress. I'll say this is always so you do always be a moving target. Right. you got to do it now. Union Straw taught us that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Union Straw was when it finally... A disaster. Was it, right. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. it worked out fine, it's but fine, we had yeah. some... Um, yeah. Some, some learning change, curves. you know? Yeah. yeah. Right. We can yeah, do a speed survey, to. too, because I've heard speed a bunch of times today, yeah. and I'll tell you what we normally see mm -hmm. with speed surveys is the, the complaints about speeding, it's usually a perception of speeding, mm -hmm. not actual speeding, and the perception is, so if we're sitting here right now and a car goes by at 40, it doesn't seem like anything, the car's 200 feet away. When you're getting out of your car on Central Street <laughs> and the car goes next to you at 25, it's... But don't we know we oh can't God. go less than 20 on the state road because it's a state road in the common, even though we would like so, it to be less, but we can't do we it. We could... And, 30 really 20 is the school zone so 30 is the 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 general law basically for that would cover downtown but the state enacted i think it was, it was this year or last year the town could adopt 25. i thought we were already there it was a legislative action that you, okay. that allowed towns to adopt 25. so you see some of these places um i think the boston city of boston every road's 25 unless otherwise posted okay. not that we want to adopt 25 right. everywhere in town that's great but there might be a, a 
I'm not super familiar with how the process of how to adopt the 25, but there might be a way to do it, adopt right. it in certain strategic places like around the rotary. Yeah. The difference between 25 and 30, not that much. Right, but 30 is going to feel fast. Obviously. But again, and that's an enforcement thing, but it's also design speed. Like if we do some yeah. of these things, we talk about that slow, we saw that last summer, things right. slowed down. Just putting up a sign doesn't slow drivers mm -hmm. down. So it's really a combination. No, just of having a both police car in that spot at the, at, you know, if there's a big event at the Orpheum or, you know, if it's three o'clock and school's getting out or the, you know, whatever it may be, I, I, I think that just having a, someone in that oh. spot, don't always make me feel safer when I cross, but I think it slows everyone down. You know, it's funny because when you think about it, Dave Fiscaldo always sitting in the, uh, uh, fire firehouse. Uh, and we do oh, the, oh, he oh, loves oh, it over there. And we do the, the, uh, <laughs> the, I call it the blue spot which at the color might need to change with the accessible parking we'll put in. But that spot, we do that every afternoon for the outbound school traffic yes. Right. Um, yes. to get the buses through, things like that. So we're there every day. And I think what we can do probably improve on is if we know there's going to be an event or something, have some, even yeah. if somebody's just sitting in BP for a half hour, sitting right there, we know when they're closed, there's, right. there's yep. some sort of presence. So totally. we can yeah. definitely well, I was in Acretown this, this weekend, and we were parking, and we weren't sure if our, our tail of our car was hanging too far over. And, and there was actually a, an enforcement officer walking by, and I'm like, excuse me, sir, are we okay here? Get here. And he's like, you're fine. So even little things like that, of having that presence, you know, I'd go up to a police officer and be like, am I okay over yeah, here? Yeah, where do I But then having that presence right outside the bar yeah. creates a difference. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, right. Fish you too. <laughs> and lastly, I'll just remember that everybody, you know, walking is good. We all need steps on our pedometers yep. and you know if you go to the mall you walk so coming up town you're gonna maybe do a little walking we're gonna try to make it safer feel safer and whatnot but it's, it is a work in progress so we just have to change that mindset of uptown all right great thank you all right thank thanks you. all right so we're about an hour behind schedule <laughs> a little bit. so um, the next thing on the schedule is the town manager value valuation presentation so everyone on the board should have already seen what I put together. I put this together on my own. I know there's been some talk about that in the past. Does it make sense if HR does it or the chair? But I put this together on my own. Hopefully I don't find any mistakes as I roll through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read what I put together and then this does go in Bill's file as the summary. I mean I think it's it's definitely a satisfactory evaluation, absolutely for sure. Um, I also have a 15 page document of all Bill's accomplishments, and that is two, two um, columns on each page, you know, and I won't read over those, but I think we will probably highlight some of those, I think, in the next, in the next seven months. Anything else to add before I kind of launch into this? No, I'm Okay. Fine. All right, so um, the following is a summary of Bill Keegan's performance evaluation for the past year, April 21 to May 22. The ratings as well as the comments have been compiled from the submissions of all the remaining board members for that year. So that's Stephanie McGowan, Leah Gibson, Seth Ferguson, and Mark Elfman. Um, Dennis was not here and um, Mr. O'Leary stepped down so he was not part of the process. Um, this is my own feedback but the evaluation format and rating scale was changed to reflect a 1 to 10 scale this year versus a 1 to 5 rating of the past year. So Mike and I have talked about this ad nauseum. I wholeheartedly disagree with the 1 to 10. I just think it's like optically like if you get a 6 it's like a 60. It, it doesn't look the same as a 3 you know and I don't know any ratings that I personally have ever been part of that are on a 1 to 10 scale so um, you may hear me refer to it as a one to five rating and I hope that next year we will go back to a one to five rating as well. <clears throat> Why was it changed? Um, I don't, I just don't think, I think that's how the system was software. and it wasn't really yeah, thought so about. The, so the, the uh, software is assessed team and the default value is a, is a one to 10 scale. Uh, so we've worked with the developer after Leah and I talked and we've changed all of the employee scales uh, back to what they were, either the one to four or one to, one through five. And then next next year, this will be up to a five scale. Yeah, so you know, just back to resetting the default. What I'm going to reference is it goes to one to 10, but I don't like one to 10 is kind of right. the bottom line. So a rating of a six represents meeting expectations or effective, which you know would be like a three on last year. So next year, I've suggested we return to the one to five rating with a summary comment section at the end. So that is something that we used to have in years past that said what areas need improvement, what constructive or positive ideas can you offer to improve, and then what other comments or observations do you have to share. So I know we have, we were actually forced to make a comment on everyone. I don't know that we have to do that in, in other, in years um, in the future, but I do like some kind of positive and constructive wrap-up comment at the end that was something that we were missing that I'd like to see come back. 
So the overall score for Bill's performance evaluation was a 7.6 or equivalent to a 3.8 on a, on a rating scale of 5. Um, the first goal is to protect and enhance the financial health of the town, and the overall average for that, for that particular goal, the first goal out of four, was a 7.8. So I did pick one comment from each of us for each of the goals, so you'll, you'll notice there's some that are in here, and they are both constructive and positive comments, so there is a blend of them, and always trying to get to, as Mary Beth used to say, the essence of the review. <laughs> um, so, you know, I looked, and if everyone kind of had the same rating, but there was one comment that was totally different than everyone, I didn't feel that was the essence of the, of the review or the feeling of the board, so. Um, I am going to read through all of these. I probably will read pretty quickly, but stop me if you have any comments. So and try to decide who said what. Yeah, That's try to remember part. if it's yours. We'll play a little game, okay? So um, first one coming off of COVID, it was critical to start budget strategy discussions early. Those discussions were started early, and Bill was able to hold the budget to that strategy. No holds at town meeting was quite impressive. I think it speaks to setting a strategy, sticking to it, and educating taxpayers in advance. The next one, same goal. Bill is strong here and the financial stability through the pandemic is evidence of this. Bill has helped provide the financial flexibility that enables smart investment in services and infrastructure. The incremental headcount at the library was a miss. There will be a poor return on this investment. Next comment, Bill had been bringing forward capital projects, but we need to look at what's a must versus what's a need. We were able to get a lot of CIP items funded with ARPA money. Next comment, there is no more of a transparent budget process than the one Mr. Keegan has instituted over the past six years. Unlike the advisory committee, all meetings are televised and appropriate stakeholders are present at the meeting. The most telling indication was the recent town meeting last week. Not one question was raised about the entire budget proposed at the meeting for approval. All right, goal, goal two is promote and enhance communication through community engagement. So this was a 7.4 out of 10. And comment one, I have heard about the communication strategy and feel, but it feels like we're a ways from implementing. It's a good idea that needs some more energy to implement effectively. Next comment. Bill has enabled his team to bring the story of their department to light. Next comment. Customer service has always been very high, very high on importance for Bill. Constant reminders to the staff that the number one reason they have a job is because of the townspeople. And final comment, we do a good job on keeping the town site Town website up to date, but sometimes it's hard to navigate. The third goal, which it came in at a 7.6, promote and enhance business and smart economic development. So comment one. I think Bill does a good job at helping to create a healthy business environment. Shoveltown and Schneider are good examples. Next comment, his involvement with the EDC, Tri-Town Chamber of Commerce, his own town manager trade organizations keeps Bill, keeps Bill apprised of changes that might occur locally or around the state. Next comment, train stuff has been fairly quiet this year. I do not think we really focused much on the silencing of horns. I'd like to see us do more, I'd like to see us have a more proactive relationship with the rail organization. Some of that may be out of, out of our hands though. Next comment, Bill seems to be supportive of these departments and committees, committees to help with the needs of our businesses in town. A recap to the Board of Selectmen on the master plan might be helpful. It's been around a while, would love to see where we are. And then the final one, which also came in at a 7.6, they're all pretty, pretty um, even as far as the goals go. Promote tight range, yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty tight range, thank you. Promote modern and professional town operations. So first comment, Bill and his staff have done an exceptional job over his tenure as manager updating the town's policies and procedures. He went from having a very spotty policies and procedures to a very complete set of manuals for the town. I think this will be one of the many legacies Bill will leave the town when he retires. Next comment, Bill and Page tried, but the town didn't have an appetite for this one. Sometimes knowing when to listen to the taxpayers and shelf a project is just as successful as implementing a new plan. And I believe that was about the housing production plan. Third comment, Bill has done a fantastic job with his involvement of Semerick. It's a quite impressive facility in operation. And I did note that Semerick is where Bill ranked the highest consistently across all reviews. Um, and final comment, Bill is personable, reasonable, and thoughtful. Customer service is a strength. He is exceptionally responsive. So that is a summary of a great evaluation. Um, and I believe this will be, this will be the, the final one with Bill as well. So um, I don't know if you guys had a chance. I asked Bill to put together a list of accomplishments during his tenure. And 
Um, I know, Steph, you were, I think you were in the bath when I mentioned it, but it's, it's 15 pages with two columns on each page, and I think maybe <laughs> we can highlight some of those you know, over the course of the next seven months to really talk through some of the great, the great things that were done over, over Bill's tenure. So he's not gone yet, just the final review, um, but a, a very, a very, very, very great rating, and um, I think, that. you know, we're lucky to have him here. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank so, you. yes? <clears throat> so going from the 10-point uh, mm -hmm. scoring system to the 5-point scoring system, the only question I would have is, did something af affect uh, how he, because of the new system, did it create some kind of bias in terms of the overall results? So if you were to go back, for instance, prior years, uh, 3.8, is that typically what he's gotten for a rating, or is this Yeah, different? so I think last year was 0 0.2 higher than that. It was a little bit higher. And I have to say, I also didn't love the definitions. So they used to be, I, I forget what the five definitions were, but now it went to like effective, minimally effective. Mm -hmm. There were no definitions around them. So I just think it's all feedback as we go through a new system that next year we have to have a proactive discussion about that and make sure that we're all on the same page and not just kind of falling to the defaults in the system. Because well, well, you couldn't. I thought last year, because we could pick a number. Yeah. We, like, so say, say I was like, OK, um, I'm, not, I'm not quite a three, uh, but I'm not quite a, quite a four. I could, I could write down 3.5. Well, because it was on paper, but I don't yeah. think you'll be able to do yeah. that still. But the, the way it went, with mm -hmm. the 10 point system, it went by two. So you, mm -hmm. you kind of could only do like a two or a four. Like mm -hmm. there was no, right, right. you know, it, it kind of, yeah. I, 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 I just really don't like the 10 point scale, yeah. but I, and I do think it may have had some sort of result, but I don't think it, I don't mm -hmm. think that it discredited the process. No, by any and in, in the word, like you said, the word gave it those, those two. So if, if I picked effective, it was going to give a six. Yeah. Where maybe yeah. I would have rather give a seven. Right. You know, right. You know what I mean? It yeah. didn't really, like it kind of, whichever word you picked, it kind of mm -hmm. it narrowed it in a little bit. I, I, yeah. And I'd like to go yeah. back to the words that we used. Mm -hmm. I liked those better and the definitions on the old form. And I would, I would suggest, I know we're not in charge of townwide reviews, but I would suggest mm -hmm. implementing all that, you know, to kind of have that discussion or keep it really the same as it was. So the, the, the only downside, and I think you're referring to what you're getting to there, is that it, was, it was sort of a, a new process that, yeah. right, right. and, and it, unfortunately, I was the one that <laughs> right, right. either benefit or didn't benefit from it, and, and that, as a result of that. But, but it, listen, it's it's fine, you know. Um, it, it, I think, you know, we wanted to get to a a digital process of review. It's probably not ready for prime time entirely, but it's but it's on its way, and I think, you know, um, it's got a little bit of work to do. I think we all recognize that, you know, with some of the downsides to what came out of it. But it is, you know, it it, it was not. I, I will. T it took me almost five or six hours to do it myself as a self evaluation. So it was. It took a while to get through because there's even while, even while it's only four categories, there's 26 different objectives. So it's a much broader evaluation than, than what's really displayed in the summary. And I, I think the summary is fine. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's just important for people to know that that there was a lot of stuff in that, mm -hmm. and um, so I think. Um, it's hard to capture all that in an evaluation, in a, an electronic evaluation system like that, because it's, there's a lot of, uh, of, of stuff in between that could be, as Stephanie noted, it could have been, it could have been scored in between if it, if, in some cases. Uh, that's yeah. a good example. And there was no yeah. spell check on the comments, which drove me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, obviously, this was only my second time doing this, sets first, but what what about you? I mean, obviously, Leah. Oh, you gave can't her, go by I, me. I like old school. I like the handwritten one. I like to be able to do three point five or four point five. Yeah. So, so you like, just you so you know the, the system one. did like just output all this for me. So as someone that was yeah. compiling it, I was really able to like manipulate the numbers, <laughs> condense the comments, look at them side by side. Like it, it. I I think it was. It was I, I would hate to see us go back to paper, but. Oh. I've given all kinds of comments and my thoughts on the whole, what, yeah. what we can do different. No, I think we, we got to go forward, yeah. and, I, and, and I think we, we're fine-tuning it, yep. but if the question you asked me, I like the old way, but <laughs> going forward, we're going to make some changes. 
I'm sure it's going to be fine <coughs> next, a, a lot I, better next year. I, I will just tell you that I was, as, as personally, I would have preferred not to have this as my final evaluation right. tool because right. I, it's sort of like it, it sort of impacted me and and what I thought the score should have been personally. Yeah. But but look, I, it's my final. I'm done. I'm, I feel I'm, I'm, I really appreciate the comments from everybody. That it just um, it's gone. It's we've gone through a lot. I'm not done yet, so um, it's not my final final say about how things go here, but I appreciate the, uh, the time and effort that went into it. So thank you. Thank you. All right, any other comments? We still have a, a lot to get through, so I will, any, anything else on this one? No. All right, so I will probably just ask as much as we can, can keep things brief, and if anything's in front of us, we don't have to necessarily go through it in high detail, but. Mike. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Okay, so I have a very brief report, and that, that is uh, three new hires. Uh, so we did hire, and it, this is in your board docs. Um, we hired a, a food inspector, and that's uh, this regional public health position. Uh, Paul Gilpin will be starting on uh, June 13th. Um, as well, we did hire a housing inspector. Clifford Pierre will be starting on June 27th. And we did also hire, uh, fill the position that we've had advertised, which is um, uh, part-time collections coordinator in finance, also starting June 27th. And we have three uh, positions that we're currently uh, working on filling, and those are uh, two of them are DPW positions, a laborer driver in Tree and Park, and uh, as well as a seasonal laborer, which would be just a summer, summer employment job, and uh, in the library, a part-time librarian. And that's that's all I have. Mike, what uh, were the yes. credentials of the public health uh, person? Um, so I don't have those in front of me, but they um, they they're actually uh, local folks. At least the, um, the the food inspector is local. He's um, and they've they've both got experience in um, uh, let's see in municipal government doing doing those sort of inspections both uh, housing and and uh, food inspections uh, respectively it was it was a little bit on the lean side though Dennis I will tell you because that's just the way the market is we can't, it's really it was tough to find these people in fact we had very very thin applications on both of those we actually went back out and, and yeah. re-advertised uh, we've had these uh, open for a long time but uh, we're, we're very satisfied with the people we brought in, but not 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 super bulky experience. And we, we I will tell you that both people aspire to be healthcare professionals later on in, in, in tr trying to develop their careers. So that's that was important to us that they want to be on that track. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in public health. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Bill. So uh, just a, a couple uh, a couple updates on things. Uh, first of all, just a reminder that we do have the parade. On Saturday, on Saturday morning, starting at 10 o'clock, I think we're going to assemble at 132 Central Street. Um, the uh, the Semrick uh, board is meeting actually Thursday night this week. I know this board cannot make it, but apparently the other three towns could make it. So they're going to go ahead and meet. We're going to have Rob come in on the 21st to meet with you to go over the Semrick board okay. changes. Um, it, the uh, this the governance agreement needs to be amended because. We're now contemplating the addition of a couple new communities, and so we need to amend the agreement to, to, to allow us to accept, to accept them. So we didn't even have three that could go? I know. No, okay. we couldn't. Fortunately, I think there was only one. If I, I thought, was that the only one that could go? Only one, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I, know, so I think you and I are both out of town. Then we want to try at least have a quorum of each. I think I was each the board. only one that could go. Uh, Doc saying his, he could too. That's why I don't know. Oh. Well, now it's yeah. too late to post it anyway, I guess. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. okay. He'll come in on the 21st. Was it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, yeah. Thursday, yeah. yeah. You can. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the meeting if you want. To, if you're you're, you're yeah. entitled to go, so at least you'll be, uh, um, you know, you'll explain. You'll hear the the presentation. Okay. So it's entirely up to you if you want. Okay. So that's coming up on uh, that's coming up on Thursday night. Um, the um, we, the capital uh, improvement planning committee met earlier this evening before right before this meeting. Uh, Stephanie and I were, were both there for the presentations on uh, several different projects. Um, one. Uh, using utilizing ARPA money for uh, new water meters, and the other one is uh, for using uh, ARPA money for uh, for di dam improvements that are that are really something we've been needing to do for a long time. The other was for a replacement or, or adding of, of a vehicle for the uh, one of the uh, four-wheel drive uh, mini mini vehicles they use for the police department. 
uh, for, for doing work uh, up at Gillette, which, by the way, is uh, they rent that vehicle from us to use that, so we, it actually helps pay for those vehicles uh, by, by utilizing those funds. And then the second one was the replacement of a command vehicle in the fire department. That, the challenge that we're, we're trying, that we're finding, is that we have to order these vehicles like two years in advance because we can't get them. So we're ordering them, and if we can get them earlier, then fine. But um, we're actually taking steps to, to at least start the process now, so we can at least get the uh, the vehicles uh, starting in the in the, uh, in the ordering process. So that so we've gotten through those. I'll be back to to this board on the 21st with a recommendation on all, all four of those those projects. Okay. Um, and I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we wanted to. Uh, we are working on the on the communications plan, and we, and we actually did. The plan is actually essentially done. We just need to fill the, the different pieces of it, uh, roll out certain pieces of it. So we're, we're trying to look at an implementation process, and I know we've been working with Leah on this one. So we we'll, and we're going to continue to do that, but we're going to have a conversation with you prior to the meeting in July, and then we'll, we'll actually try and present something during the July meeting if we can. Uh, but we, we're pretty close to getting it rolled out. And it's, it's interesting, this is really becoming a really important issue for virtually every single city and town that I know of, is communications. And, 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 and interesting enough, I think we're the only town that actually has a plan. Um, so I think that's really where we're a little ahead of the schedule. But what's interesting is that um, we already have some elements, which I think we can actually embellish even further. We do have a, a newsletter that goes out to the seniors. I was actually going to mention that tomorrow morning with Mark. Maybe we can actually embellish that to be more of a a town-wide newsletter that affect, that includes information on a town-wide basis. Mm -hmm. Instead of reinventing the wheel and going something new, we already have something that works really well, so let's try and yeah. embellish upon that. if it's like a little corner of a page you now. Yeah, exactly. So uh, something we're going to look at some more. Um, um, all right, we have an earth removal permit coming up uh, that's, <laughs> that you'll be seeing for Where is one that one, though? It's not where I expected. I don't know. 32 Cedar Street. 32 thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think... I think that's it. Okay. Um, boards, and, boards and committees we'll talk about in a minute. Yes. So, okay. All right. So our first thing, I was supposed to talk about Paige's Marilyn Robin Performance Center Award, that she got one during that night she was talking about the drone thing. She got the Producers Award. So I meant to recognize her when she was here for that, but neglected to. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, Bill already mentioned Founders Day, and then um, a first draft of the goals is in board docs, we're not going to talk about them tonight, but I would ask all of you guys to look at them and give any feedback to Seth via Christina um, by the 21st. So, so the ones, I, I came up with a set of goals, Seth has looked at me, made some, I thought really productive changes to those, so appreciate that. Okay. And, then, um, and then now they're in your hands, so you can then give further feedback, or if there's something else that we missed that you wanna bring up we can do that, but I think that this is more of a focused uh, set of goals this time, because of the smaller mm -hmm. time frame. But I do think that um, it's a good it's a good group. And then I think we'll be look, re looking at them again when you know when the new town manager comes as well. Right. So. Yeah, you may want to start. You'll, yeah. you'll, have, you'll have a process for that okay. whenever that process uh, is finalized. Any other selectmen's updates from anyone on the board? Yeah, I can't uh, congratulate Allie enough for the great job she did on Memorial Day. That's great. Uh, it was a wonderful day. Yes. Perfect day. Uh, it was a perfect day. She, she called in the weather just right. She, um, she must have had a novena. There's a novena going on the day before, yeah. I think. And uh, so. she did a wonderful okay. job. And uh, it was uh, yep. a lot of fun to be a part of. Steph did a great job with uh, representing that. the uh, Kept the a nice short and sweet. Short and sweet. It was great. <laughs> which it was great. Well, you know something, I, I, I knew Bill and um, uh, Paul Feeney and, and Jay okay. Barrows would, would be elaborating much more, so I figured we didn't need an, another person to, mm -hmm. to elaborate and repeat everything they said, so I kind of kept it. Just, we tried try to be a little bit more focused, because yeah. it was such a good day, Nobody, I, don't think, I think people wanted to get through it and enjoy it. So well, and, and there was a lot of people there. there was oh, yeah. a, it was a can, big turnout. Yeah, yeah and can I share one thing, because I said to Allie afterwards, I don't come from a big military family. Um, you know, um, my generation and, and below me, there's only a, a scattered few. You know, I had some uncles that were in the military, but um, it, was, it was humbling to be there 
and to listen to all, all the speeches. And um, it was, I, I, I was, I was honored to be a, to be a part of it. Even even just just us all, you know. Other than Leah, she had a commitment, but us all, even just walking in the parade, it was it was a great great feeling to be a to be a part of it. She did she did a fabulous job, yeah, like did. Doc said. And I think we I almost missed congratulating our seniors too. They graduated last weekend on another beautiful oh, day. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, congratulations to all them. All right. I just I do want to congratulate my granddaughter who graduated from. Uh, uh, school this morning at three, at three years old. Oh. So, I missed it. Unfortunately, it was in New Jersey, but but I, I did actually. They had they filmed it on Facebook Live, and I actually saw her receive her diploma. Isn't that, was that great? A, no, like, was my awesome. parents yeah, have gone to like awesome. my son's band concerts on. You know, just tune into yeah. FCA. So it's so it great. great. It was great to see. All right, so we have uh, four action items to conclude the meeting. <clears throat> A uh, motion to accept the $500 donation from the Law Office of Kathleen A. Kevney, LLC, and a $200 donation from Kathleen McKay and James Hain to the Veteran Service Department in memory of Josephine Miller. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Next is motion to disband the Naposset uh, Reservoir Committee. Second. All right, under discussion, I know that there's been talks with Doc, who was part of that, and, and Rick, who kind of led the charge there, and everyone agrees there, so we've, we've done that. So um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is motion to change the membership of the Clean Up Day Committee to be comprised of a minimum of three members with no limit on the number of members on the committee. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the uh, motion to approve the proposed appointments and reappointments for boards and committees for terms to end in 531.23, 531.24, and 531.25, or as otherwise stipulated. Second. All right, under further discussion, just for anyone out there watching, you do have to come in and be re-sworn in with each appointment, including all of us, if we have any, any appointments as well. So just a reminder on that one. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, next is motion to approve the May 10th, 2022 Board of Selectmen meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And last one. Motion. Most important one. Okay. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Here it is. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.